G'day guys, welcome to the lab. 12 months ago we did a walk around video of our little K12 March race car behind us here. A few things have changed in that 12 month period and um, thought I'd do a rundown of where we're at now. Rightio, let's have a yarn about the car. Some of you have seen it before, some have not. So sorry if I'm going over stuff you already know. The piece underneath the license plate there in the front bumper, the gaping big hole, used to have some plastic louvers in there. They got chopped out basically because they were broken. It also looks a little bit more race car without them, I guess. Front guards where the Link ECU stickers are there, they've had a notch chopped out of them, which you can see quite clearly from that angle. That's just to help with airflow in theory. It hasn't been CFD'd or designed or anything, it's just I thought it looked nicer, so it did that. Front bonnet, now I've got a waterfall style vent in there. Nice and open to get much better airflow than what we had with the two little panels notched out of it before, cut out of it before. If you don't know the car, you just got a big surprise. So, engines in the back, 35 litre or thereabouts aluminium fuel cell there. That's about 2 litre header tank for the water tank to air intercooler system we've got a um, little lightweight battery sitting there relays and everything to control some pumps and all that sort of carry on which all live deep down in there so you can actually see the fuel pumps right at the bottom there if you know what you're looking for a couple of Bosch 044s full speed flow filters and all that sort of carry on living under there Holden Astra or Opal Vectra, whichever badging you want to call it. An electro hydraulic power steering pump under there. Not the best unit in the world to be honest, but hey it works. Um, it'll do for now. I've added a, let's call it a regulator onto our vacuum system for the brake booster. So we can control that and get a bit better pedal feel in the car because tended to be a little bit touchy on the brakes and it was very very easy to lock it up speaking of brakes those of you who haven't seen them behind our great big 18 by 10 DTM gravity wheels are some 14 inch Z1 Motorsports Akebono uh, style rotors so in the front the, the hats and the rotors are straight from Z1 stock they just bolted straight on as did the uh, Nissan King supplied Nissan 370Z Akebono brakes. Ooh, what a mouthful. So they just bolted straight onto the front, so that was awesome. And actually just running factory brake pads because we just don't get the temp in them because it's such large brakes. So we've got King Springs all the way around and we're running, I can't ever remember the brand, we're running some aftermarket coilovers that we purchased second hand. We've got um, aluminium flares all round. So these are not carbon fibre, obviously. It's fake carbon fibre wrap. Just purely because that's the look we wanted to go for. And I don't want to run carbon fibre. Because when you bang it into the wall on the skid pan, which I did do a little while ago, you can panel beat it back into shape. Mm -hmm. This beastie here, you can see the shadows on it. That corner was about here somewhere. I absolutely annihilated it. So you can bang them back into shape if required. The brakes on the rear. These are still Akebono rotors and calipers and pads. Z1 rotors, stock pads and calipers. Zanoli up in Auckland manufactured some custom hats for us that I designed. They, um, they're a legacy from right back when the car was two-wheel drive, actually. They're the same as that. So that's how we've got around that. You can't run the normal rear-wheel drive hats in there because of the offset fouls on the knuckles that we're running. In here we've got... We've got a mess. Let me take that away. That's a bit tidier, isn't it? A Link ECU, G4 Plus Extreme ECU. It's actually a plug-in 350Z unit. And we've done that because we've actually used a standard, I think it was a 350 GT Skyline harness for the VQ35, which has then been significantly modified to make it work in the car. 
but we wanted to try and use as many stock parts as we could. Over there we've got a Link Dash 2 Pro. We've got a Woodward steering column, OMP steering wheel, OMP HTER seats, say belt harnesses, extensively modified transmission tunnel to fit our four-wheel drive system in it. Now the gearbox is actually starting just behind here is the bell housing. The gearbox runs in the car backwards. There's two gear levers, one on top of the other. We might actually be able to see, not sure if you can see in there, that rubber boot that you see, that's the top of the actual gearbox. And there's two levers, one on top of the other. So then there's two pivot points. There's one here, and there's one on top of the gear lever as you push this across this way, pushes the gear lever across on the gearbox the other way to reverse the pattern so that your gears are all in the same place they would be as normal. So that's how that one's done. In the back here, this is what everyone wants to see. VQ35DE plus turbos, 11 to 1 compression pistons, Eagle forged rods, ACL race bearings, and Kometic head gaskets. Other than that, a relatively stock engine. We've put Savage Performance coils on there to help with ignition because we were running out of spark basically. And that's about it. We've got a pair of Garrett GT2560 RS turbos mounted very, very low. Very optimistic with, with the positioning of those. They're not, um, not ideal mounted that low compared to the sump there is a little bit of oil leakage past the seal but for our application it's considered acceptable. We're running Link ECU CAN Lambda units so we've got one O2 sensor in each bank now. We only had one to start with. That was a bit of a problem because we actually broke a camshaft on this engine and figuring that out was quite difficult and Right there is the broken camshaft. So we lost one lobe off an inlet camshaft and we lost a whole trigger wheel and basically one bank was not doing its variable timing thing. It was actually quite difficult to figure out until we had twin can lambda and that was blatantly obvious. So also something else that's failed in the back of the car, teething problems and stuff. You'll see there's a big CV joint on the diff there there was the same thing on this side and we had that shaft cut and re-splined to fit into the CV joint even though we didn't need to because we've got a CV joint there this shaft is actually pretty much fixed it shouldn't move aside from flex and mounts and stuff we broke the shaft inside the get inside the CV joint so that's been deleted basically welded a splined unit straight onto the end of the flange where the CV joint would normally go to delete that and that's taken three and a half kgs out of the car rotating mass in the back so that's quite handy and it's made it significantly stronger and easier to work on to be honest so that's all pretty good now that motor makes 400 kilowatts at the hubs and about 700 newton meters of torque so she's a grunter we have done drag racing with the car uh, just one attempt at drag racing and I managed to do an 11.8 second quarter mile taking it relatively easy on the car and we were actually running into a slight boost cut the turbos were spooling up quicker than what was anticipated so the um, map limit was kicking in just a little bit earlier it was only 10 kPa which is a frustrating thing but it was resolved when we got home I shifted the tune and that was problem solved so that's that I think I've talked enough I think you guys will be happy just to look for a couple of minutes we got the it's actually a factory in this in March dash it doesn't have to be in there for the classes we run we could run the car without it but it doesn't weigh a lot and it looks tidier with it in there and we got um, Mike Shaw fiberglass flocked our dash for us, which was quite cool. Looks really good. Also did the door cards, which have had a real hard time. It's been a lot of use. People keep leaving, um, leaving the harness flicked over the outside of the 
the cage and then closing the door. Doesn't matter how many times you tell people don't do that, they seem to uh, seem to manage to do that. So that's why that's looking a bit beaten up. The dead pedal. Oops, sorry, crashed the phone. Dead pedal was something that Steve Millen suggested we put in the car. It allows you to put your foot hard on that pedal and push yourself into the seat while you're um, cornering, etc. It gets you more feel for what the car's doing. And you'd be surprised how right he was. That's, you know, definitely makes a big difference. We've also, I've added the extension on the floor there just to help Paul Radisic get his feet on the correct position on the pedals when he's driving it. They're just a little bit... Um, higher up than what you would want ideally so shifting the, the floor up there a little bit for him has just helped him out so yeah well hopefully maybe you've come here from hill climb monsters maybe you've been on the channel for a while if not you'll see we did a 53.31 at leadfoot in 2019 we've done a 52.29 in 2020 so let's hope we can get it back to lead for 2021 and do a 51 that would be good wouldn't it that put us right up in the top five perhaps okay so next up for the car is nz superlap series taupo motorsports park 28th of january uh 28th of March so a couple of weeks time and we'll see if we can do a sub 30 I think we're a 38.5 so we need to come close to a 37 36 37 on the big track right guys there you go like share subscribe catch us later cheers boy